If you guys are lacking coins for all the new cards that are out, then check out MuleFactory.com. They're the cheapest site I've found for coins. They deliver in five minutes. And if you use TGC Kurt 5 at checkout, you get 5% off your order. Check them out with the link down below now. What's up, guys? Curtis here, and welcome to a brand new FIFA 18 video. Today, we're going to be looking at players that are not returning for FIFA 18 next year, whether that be retirement, moving to a league not in the game, a global ban, or whatever. All of these players in this episode, we don't think will be returning to Ultimate Team, at least at the start of next season. There is possibility for a lot of these things to change. Some of these players could sign contracts. Things can change between me even doing the research to recording to uploading. Hopefully, everything is as accurate as possible. If you know any players that won't be in FIFA 18 that you think I should have mentioned as well, comment them down below. It would be interesting to hear if there's any I've missed. And of course, smash that like button if you guys are looking forward to it. But without any further ado, let's get into this episode. And we're going to start with the first player on the bench, and that is Danny. This guy, of course, has been a staple of FIFA. He's been around for a long time now. Everyone uses this card. It's just a sick card in the game. He's been at Zenit. He was at, um, he's been at Zenit for as long as I can remember. Absolute beast on FIFA. But he has moved. He's moving to Slavia Prague this window. And as far as I'm aware, they aren't on FIFA. Now, I've been to Prague, but I'm pretty sure they aren't on the game. I'm 99% sure. So he should, for that reason, not be in the game. Anyway, we have another one. We have Brown Idei. This guy, a um, bit of a weird one. He, uh, he played for some interesting clubs. He featured in the Premier League. He was, of course, at Olympiacos last season. You guys may remember him from West Bromwich Albion. He's just signed in Chinese now, playing for Tianjin Teda. That's a similar one to our next one. Odian Igalo in the January, of course, moved to China. He left Watford to go and sign for Changchun Yatai. I don't know how much the fee was for, but he won't be in the game for that reason. Then we have a couple of uh, retirees. Now, this one he may have been the game as an icon. We don't know yet. Frankie Lampard, of course, has retired from football. There's a few retirees. We're pushing through the bench quite quickly. Uh, we have one more. We're going to go for Didier Drogba. Now, this one isn't actually a retiree like I thought it was. Uh, he signed for Phoenix Rising in, I think, the Indian Super League. I will double check. Oh, Phoenix Rising is... I got that completely wrong. It's actually in the USL, like the second tier soccer league in America. So... There you go. That's that one. But we're going to go on to Totti next. Now, this guy has been in every FIFA. I think he's the only player to have been in FIFA 96 that is still in FIFA now, which is just a little bit mental, really, when you think of it like that. Absolutely unreal. The guy is retiring. It's going to be the first FIFA in my lifetime he's not featured in. So it's definitely, definitely going to be a shame. And he's, uh, he's going to be missed for sure. Next up, we have Adrian Ramos. Now, there's a lot of players this episode. So I'm going to try and get through some of them relatively quickly. But Adrian Ramos, uh, he's a player that I always like to use in FIFA. This year, not so much. But year before, year before that, he was sick. And obviously, that foot birthday card was out of this world. Dortmund player, owned technically. Uh, he was at Hertha before that. He's been on loan to Granada this season, and he's just signed permanently for Chongqing Lifan. I think that's right. I I'm sure I'm going to butcher a lot of the names, because a lot of these players are going to play in China or retiring. It's the main two reasons why players are no longer in the game. It's, it's the just the two most obvious ones, but uh, Ramos will be going to China and um, won't be featuring in next year's game. Unless, of course, they manage to get the Chinese license, then that'd be something interesting. The amount of players that would come back into the game would make Ultimate Team very... Very interesting. Next up, though, we have Xabi Alonso. It's going to be sad to uh, to not see him in the game. He's obviously not really someone used very much in FIFA, but he is a staple of European football. People love him. Liverpool fans love him. He was great at Real Madrid. He was great at Bayern Munich. Amazing for Spain. Absolute unreal player. The definition, him and Pirlo are class on the pitch. Like You look at them and you think... That is just a classy man, and he's definitely going to be missed from football. I'm going to go. I'm going to go for Lam next. He wasn't actually going to be next, but I feel like they they could be in the same sort of breath. A player that played to the top level right to the end, absolutely unbelievable. Philip Lam was. I mean, he got in the team of the year in his last professional season. You can't say much more than that. He and uh, and of course, yeah, he's just retired, retired permanently, and uh, quite sad at only the age of 33. Seems a little bit young for me, but fair enough. If he wants to retire. Let him do so. Next up, we have Alvaro Dominguez. Now, now this one is actually really sad, Dominguez. So I'm going to read out from his Wikipedia page. On 6th of December 2016, after having not played a match in more than a year, Dominguez announced his retirement from 
all football at the age of 27 as a result of the chronic back problems he suffered. It goes on, blah, 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 blah. He had revealed that he'd been living with a back condition for the past few years and that despite having surgery twice in an attempt to rectify the problem, he had been obliged to play by Borussia Mönchengladbach. He's later admitted he's going to take legal action against Gladbach for the medical negligence, claiming that the club failed to deal with his condition appropriately. That is mental. The guy was forced to play despite having a serious back problem. Absolutely mental. Ab just ridiculous. I can't believe that, that he was forced to play. Uh, next up, we have Roman Eremenko, though. This one isn't injury-based. This is his own fault. The guy failed a drug test. Now, you can't even find him on FIFA anymore under concepts. Now, he is still in people's clubs if you already had him, but you can't find him under concept players. Now, if you guys don't know, the guy was a bit of a melt. He was handed a two-year ban from UEFA due to testing per positive for cocaine after a uh, after after a Champions League game. Uh, I can't remember who they played, but it's for CSK Moscow. Um, it was actually a ban for 30 days by Finland and then the month later the, the actual thing came out and announced what it was so he is not in the game so that spot is free but I, I, I whilst recording this video I thought for someone I could fill that with but um, Gerard is going to be our next one he uh, he probably will be an icon next season is what you'd expect but he's retired of course from football this season so we're going to go through that one quite quickly Axel Witzel this one upsets me this guy is always sick in FIFA I love using his card does he still have four star skills he does still have four star skills an absolute beast in the midfield but he's gone to Tanjin Quanjin Maybe I've said that right, probably not. But uh, one of the many players in this this uh, team to have moved to the Chinese Super League. And a player that you would use a lot and you're definitely going to miss. A lot of the players that have gone to the Chinese Super League are the ones that are more upset. And the retirees don't really matter as much because they're old. You're not really using their cards. But these players, Oscar, this is one, is not going to be, uh, is, is definitely going to be missed. It feels like a lot longer ago that he went to uh, Shanghai SIPG. It happened at the end of December. Of course, that means he's now in the Chinese Super League. He's only scored one goal in 13. He's not really been very good. And he actually has been banned for, uh, he had an eight match ban for purposely kicking a ball at a player and then starting a fight. So the guy, he's had an interesting spell in China. Absolutely ridiculous. But uh, this one, this one's an interesting one. It's Slatan Ibrahim. And when it dawns on you that the guy that has this many cards in FIFA and is unreal every year might not be in the game. That's really upsetting. Now, his contract technically has expired for Man United. The club announced he will be released in the Premier League web in the Premier League released thing that they put on their website. Zlatan was included in it. He was released. He's no longer being paid by the club, but he's still training there and he's having his rehabilitation at the club. Now, this past week, talks have come out that he may decide. To re-sign for Man United, he may re-sign in January. They don't know exactly what's going to happen, but as things currently stand, he's not on the books of a club and will not be in FIFA at the start of the game. And that is mental because that will be the first ultimate team he's not been in, and he's gonna—he's one of the very, very big players of FIFA and uh, in both height and his effect on the game. So it's going to be an interesting one. But um, next up, we have Carlos Tevez. Obviously, he moved to Boca Juniors at the start of the, uh, I think the last season. He's been there for two years now on FIFA. Still in the game, obviously, because uh, uh, the, the Argentinian league is on the game. But he moved to Shanghai Shenhua on the 29th of December. He signed for the Champions League thing. I think he became the highest paid player in the world for it, which is just insane. But uh, he's going to be massively missed in FIFA. A very, very big player every year, just in Argentinian squads as well. Getting that strong link, I think, with uh, Driussi at the moment. I know Driussi has just moved, but that's a sick front line. And he still was, this in form, is still a very, very good card in FIFA. So it's a shame he's going, but hopefully for players like him, they can get their license in for the Chinese Super League. It would be absolutely amazing. And one player I've just thought to include in this squad, and um, it's news that actually broke today at the time of recording. It's absolutely horrific, and I know the whole world of football uh, heartbroken over it. That is Nuri. This guy... Ajax player, this is it's insane to me to think of. Don't worry, I'm not gonna put this guy on the on the thumbnail or anything like that. But this guy, if you guys don't know, he collapsed in a game for Ajax in a friendly the other day. I actually have him in my club for some reason, but um, he collapsed in a friendly the other day. Absolutely just heartbreaking stuff. And it's been actually revealed today that he suffered severe brain damage and, and will never recover from it. And it's just mental. When you see stuff like that happen in football, there's of course been a couple of players passed this year. Check Teote passed. It's really, really upsetting stuff. And 
you don't think about it when you go and watch football so to see stuff like that it's absolutely crazy and i i know it will never be found by any of his family but of course i'm sure you guys know thoughts go out to his family absolutely uh, heart-wrenching stuff but that brings us to the end of this episode it's a shame to end it on a bit of a somber note but thank you very much for watching have a fantastic day guys and i'll see you all next time bye bye